are treating our artists with very serious intent. We are saying these people are really capable, they have a passion for making art. I just enjoy the, enjoy the um, process of painting. I like being able to write my story um, like I have been and drawing pictures from a book, from books or magazines. This was quite a um, complex thing to do um, given that our artists all have very varied disabilities. I love going to Spark. I love painting so much, so as a baby. They face difficulties every day, just in the you know, the everyday functioning of life. They've got a tremendous freedom, the freedom of expression. They're totally pushing at boundaries all the time. I don't want people to understand That's right. we can do everything. Funded by the Tertiary Education Commission, Spark Studio offers both open and taught programs for adults with a wide range of disabilities. The tutors provide a learning process in visual arts education, especially orientated for the requirements and circumstances of the artists. In the last two years, we've implemented this whole extensive range of programs in uh, learning and visual arts education. They were very naive, they did not know about ways in which to really extend their art making. The Language Through Art and Printed Image project has equipped these aspiring artists with a new direction. Through their art, they explore different techniques and communicate personal experiences, insights and stories about their life. I did my Masters with Suzanne um, in Fine Arts and she told me that she was doing this course with Spark and um, asked me if I'd come along and, and see what they were doing. And, it was quite impressive what was happening here. Hey Mum. Oh, How's it going? Good. So, what are you working on today? Um, working on Phantom. Daniel uses art and drama as a way of telling his story. Daniel kept talking about becoming a better painter, a more skilled painter, a better artist, and looking for more support. There was a shift in um, management at the same time and it was then that I started making inquiries about the art session being a learning environment. It was about um, providing a vision, providing a leadership, providing a, an infrastructure um, for people to really engage and begin to test out and stretch their own skills and abilities as tutors. She mentioned to me that they were going to do more of a, a tutoring type of course. It was, it was really interesting as much as we were going through the process of all the disabilities that each person had and that was quite overpowering really in some ways. And I think that's the important thing is the being art tutors and therapists at the same time is they're able to work really effectively with people who have complex needs. And when it comes to the actual first day of, of meeting the students I was quite, it was a bit like for me jumping off a precipice when I was quite, quite concerned about it. But, um, no, they were great. When I first started work here, Jung took my hand and he said, Suzanne, I want you to help us tell our story. In fact, I Tell My Story became the name for our 2007 exhibition, which was directly out of Jung's mouth. Being so invisible, a lot of our people are really intelligent. You know, people like Jung and Alison have quite a sophisticated way of thinking. I've been assisting Jung and many others make their books mm. this term. And um, Jung has come up with a wonderful book, wonderful ideas. Mm. And um, yeah, so this is the final version. People have no idea how to put a in the As Jung was saying, when, when people see someone in the wheelchair, all they see is the wheelchair. They don't see the person in the wheelchair and the personality of that person in the wheelchair. And also, he wants to tell how he came to be the way he is, and that is part of his story. When I was born, when I was a little baby, when I came out of my mother, I had lack of oxygen. When my mum gave birth to me, the doctor tried to revive me because my whole flesh was blue. My leg doesn't work, but my hand does work. 
the oxygen apparently affected part of his brain when he was um, born, and he has got not much use of um, his legs, and but he has got use of his hands, and he's very passionate about his art and his art making. I don't want people to understand. We just a normal person. That's right. We can do everything. <laughs> That's the way. Never having displayed their artwork in a public gallery before, these budding artists will showcase their work at the Corbin Art Gallery. It's a real skillful blend of visual arts education and following a self-developmental process. In the latest programme that we've been doing, um, we, we started off running a lot of group processes and group learning activities. And then as we moved towards the bookmaking element, we looked at where individuals' um, strengths in art making were and also where their passion in terms of telling their story was. My name's Rodney. I'm a massage therapist. I came to Spark um, last, last year. I've been doing paintings, now I'm writing a book. The first part is about massage. The second part is about my friend um, Daniel Costello in Fiji. The third part is the ups, ups and downs of my relationship. Well, was. The idea was to sort of tell, tell our stories and, and the book seemed to be a perfect way to do that because it was both visual and written. We put the emphasis on the making of art. It's actually the making of art, the articulation or expression of experience in an art form that provides that therapeutic outcome. These classes are quite cool in, in that we um, start in the morning in a, um, in a circle and we um, talk about our experiences and, and kind of pull out subject matter that we might want to write a book yeah. about. People um, sometimes don't want to listen to me telling the story about my birth and um, they don't want to they don't want to know. We had this really in-depth inquiry into the different um, areas of experience that were important for each person and they were quite different. You know, some people had similar experiences to tell, some people really went back to their time of birth and what it was to be born with a person with disabilities and the resulting um, challenge that that has been for them in their life, particularly around visibility and acknowledgement and response from people in the community. I really enjoy assessing needs and um, communicating with the people here, especially with people that uh, aren't verbal, and so really finding creative ways to, to communicate, asking questions and, and making sure that they've got things that they need. There's a lot of eye contact and intuitive understanding of, of what, what's going on. Clear. The baby with big problems. This is the cover. It's one of my um, necklaces. It's a necklace with a, um, a flower on it. Yeah, so that's what's in that belly. This is a picture of me. My mother's saying to me, Hello Claire, welcome to this world. This is another story of me. Um, I got um, a photo at home of me in a trolley, a little trolley. Um, and this is the picture that I copied from a photo. My experiences in a wheelchair. My experiences in a wheelchair. This is a wheel, and it's got all different words, like frustrating, constrained. This is a page, but it's more of a dedication. I'm actually dedicating this book to my mother. A life lived twice. Finally, I know who I am. My book is a series of cameos from my life, which has been a journey and a half and has felt like a life lived twice. I enjoy life and try to make a difference in society. I want to live in a society that completely accepts difference. We are getting there. About six, six years ago, I, I was told about five years ago. came along, I destroyed the... I'm process of painting. It took me a year before I realised that I was quite good at it. Spike Studios has always been quite a bit encouraging, being supportive.
Alison plays a very active role in the disability community, as well as for Gender Bridge, where Alison has been politically active around transgender issues. The disability community is very small, but having come out and being able to use that experience has given my artwork an extra dimension. I got my degree in 1993. It took me five years of study. It just made me realize it was intelligent. Unfortunately, people listen to the way I speak and automatically think I'm stupid. It's been probably my biggest frustration in life.